With over 460 stores in 63 countries, I'm going to show you some of the most affordable products at IKEA that make your home look more expensive. Skipping past all of the bad stuff and the items that we've all already seen before, and showcasing some of IKEA's real hidden gems that include some surprising collaborations with some pretty heavy hitting designers. One of the most well-known ways to liven up your home is by decorating with plants. However, most people don't realize that one of IKEA's vase ranges was designed by the one and only Ilsa Crawford, who you may have already seen on Netflix, and she is hands down one of my favorite interior designers of all time. When we were looking for vases for our apartment, we were immediately drawn to these green tinted and patterned glass versions of these vases, and we were in love with the way that they looked as soon as we got them into our home, completely unaware of the big name designer behind them. In Canada, these cost just $15 and $16 respectively, and when considering that they are a limited time range designed by Ilsa Crawford, they are a complete steal. But should these not quite fit your aesthetic, IKEA has some pretty nice alternatives too. Additionally, you can also achieve a more expensive look in your home by including handmade items instead of mass-produced cookie cutter products, as these have typically more character due to the way that they're made, but they usually cost a lot more or two because of it. Although IKEA may not make all of their ceramics by hand, there are a few items that, if you squint, they could possibly be passable, like these small Vardande decorative vases, which cost just $12 for the pair, as well as their Gradvis pots, which cost just $9. Details such as the only partially ribbed upper section helps to make this piece feel a little bit unfinished, which tends to lend itself to a more handmade look, and this is something that you can also find in IKEA's Geofron range, which cost under $10 each, and have some really interesting and inconsistent looking patterns on them. However, when it comes to holding bigger and more mature plants, the concrete pots at IKEA are a great choice, as concrete is a somewhat natural material that has similar inconsistencies like air bubbles and marbling due to the way that it cures, which makes it look just a little bit more classy than some of the more mass-produced items that are also available there. One thing that immediately makes your home feel less expensive is clutter, which really is what I think draws a lot of people to a more minimalist lifestyle. And despite our best efforts to banish it, it always seems to rear its ugly head. Clutter will always find a way onto anything that has an empty surface, as a home is meant to be used and not just admired. And as a busy parent, this is definitely something that I find happening a lot. But one tip I find really helpful is not to force yourself or your poor housemates to conform to some new rule, but to actually design a system around your household's habits. And one way to do this is by using trays. On our kitchen island, we currently have this round bamboo tray that we found on Amazon, but we also have this very similar IKEA Ostbit tray for our coffee setup, as they are super affordable at only $7 for the smallest size. But also, because they're made entirely from bamboo, they're minimal, hard-wearing, lightweight, and sustainable too. These trays help to make multiple items appear like one, inherently making a space look less cluttered and more put together, or expensive. But these are also great because if you also need to use them for serving things too, they can be easily repurposed. But if you're not really into bamboo or the natural timber look, the IKEA Glattis tray is also a great choice, and the treated stainless steel looks a lot like brass, despite costing only $23. But if you're willing to splash out just a little bit more, you can go for the Ombanage tray, which at $45 definitely isn't the cheapest tray in the world, but it is walnut veneered, and we would have definitely picked this up if we had a darker timber aesthetic going on in our home. But also within this range, they have a beautiful two-tone serving plate that actually also acts as a great catch-all too, as really, you can use any large surface or bowl to create these clutter catching zones throughout the house. Thank you.
This principle of gathering multiple items into a singular zone also works at a larger scale too. You may have already noticed this, but when furniture doesn't have a rug partially placed underneath its feet, it looks a little bit cluttered and out of place too. And just as in the same way that trays gather multiple items into one singular zone, a rug does this for furniture too, which is why it's crucial to have one if you want your living room to look well put together or expensive. In our living room, we have IKEA's Vindem rug, which I absolutely love. And despite it not being IKEA's cheapest rug at $250, it's still very affordable compared to a lot of other rugs out there. And this one, in my opinion, is without a doubt one of IKEA's best. What's really great about this rug is that the speckled fibers provide visual texture and depth to a room, which saves it from looking flat. And speckled rugs have the added benefit of disguising stains and trapped fluff. And because it's also high pile too, we appreciate that it helps to absorb the occasional fall. Back in the UK, we chose IKEA's Stoance rug in the living room of my mum's family home, and because we loved it so much there, we chose to include this in the bedroom of our Vancouver apartment too, as it's incredibly soft and costs just $170. You can also get this rug in olive green and grey, as well as this off-white which we have, and we really like it as this bright tone really makes a small room feel much larger as it reflects the light. And because it has a slight sheen to it too, it creates some pleasant variations in the fibers, which gives it this velvet-like appearance, which makes it look a lot more expensive than it actually is. But most of all, the best thing about synthetic rugs like the Vindem and the Stoants are that they don't shed or pill. So even though they're cheap to buy, they're probably the most hard-wearing rugs you'll ever find too. But if you need even more durability, IKEA's flat-woven options like their Murram, which costs only $99 is incredibly hard wearing, so much so that it's suitable for outdoor use too. And because of this, this is the rug that I chose for this room, as synthetic flat woven rugs like this one can happily handle the abuse from chair wheels and the rubbing of feet underneath a desk. But finally, IKEA have a ton of jute and seesaw options too, which are all under $200 and look great if you're after a more natural or rustic aesthetic. And if you have a smaller space or are on a really tight budget, the lightweight cotton options are unbelievable value too, and somehow you can pick these up for under $50 each. When you look at any furniture showroom, none of them have just downlights or a typical one and done ceiling fixture that you find in most homes. And this is because these kinds of light are flat, boring and generic, the exact opposite of a well thought out and expensive looking space, as the lights that come with your home are simply there to serve the purpose of making sure that you can see when it's dark and not really anything else. So what you can do to make sure that your home looks as great as it can at all times of day, as well as during those colder and darker months, is to layer your light sources. IKEA recently really stepped up their lighting game with some quite nice table lamps, such as the fluted glass and brass effect Soul Clint, which costs just $30, or the genuinely black marble Mark Frost, which is a steal at just $25 for holding decorative bulbs like IKEA's Molnart and Lunum lines, which all cost around $10 each. Table lamps are probably the most affordable and easy way to layer lighting in your space, as you can simply sit them on any surface and they'll serve as decoration when not turned on during the day too. This is great if you're just getting started with layering lighting. However, if you really want to step the wow factor up a notch, you can look into their trad-free smart lighting range like we did recently, which can make a room look absolutely phenomenal. It used to be that architectural lighting was something that you had to get designed into a new home right from the get-go, as you'd need to get it properly wired up into your home's switches and power supply. But now, even with renters like us, you can get entire dimmable systems synchronized under one smart dimmer switch. We got this $15 trad-free bulb and switch bundle hooked up to our floor lamp, and instead of just putting lighting on the other surfaces in the room, we decided to keep them clean and install IKEA's mitt-led countertop lighting strips underneath our sideboard and kitchen countertop, which were really easy to install using nanotape. 
So now, at the flick of just one switch, we can activate and dim this entire setup without having to go around switching the lights on one by one. And the convenience of this makes such a difference when you compare it to the really harsh standard lighting that came with our apartment. Another really overlooked product for making your home look well thought out and more expensive are IKEA's glass storage jars, as these turn household necessities like coffee, tea, pasta and rice into decorative items, whilst also organising them and removing the visual clutter of bright and unpleasant packaging. And as the great Mies van der Rohe once said, God is in the details, and it's the really small details like this that make all the difference. These IKEA 365 Plus containers come in a bunch of shapes and sizes and even materials, but we like to get the 1.7 and 3.3 litre glass circular jars for our dry storage and pair them with the bamboo lids, as these add some warmth to our otherwise sterile looking kitchen, but should we need to adapt their use, it also helps that the functional airtight plastic lids also fit on these too, and in total they come to around only $10 each, which I actually think is really worthwhile for how much nicer they can make your home feel, and how much utility they also provide as glass is also dishwasher and oven safe. However, their corken jars are also a great choice with the integrated locking seal and these cost even less at between four and seven dollars. And because they come in these tall two litre sizes, we like using these ones to display and store noodles and spaghetti, as unfortunately our kitchen has a lot of cupboards with outdoors, so jars like these look great whilst also serving a very functional purpose. In my experience, creating a well put together and expensive looking home is a lot to do with pairing complementary items together. So a really easy way to do this is by adding carefully considered cushions to your sofas and chairs, as this is possibly the most affordable way to take a bland or plain looking sofa up a notch, regardless of its price. Plain sofas typically look quite empty and uninviting on their own. However, when you add cushions, you have the ability to completely change the whole vibe with different colors, patterns, sizes, and textures. And you can do this incredibly affordably. But one mistake that's very easy to make early on is to just get the cheapest possible fillers, as yeah, it's true that no one's really ever going to see them. However, despite synthetic cushions being incredibly affordable, they do suffer from being far too bouncy, which is actually a problem, as their shape immediately returns to this perfectly symmetrical, rigid square, which is a dead giveaway of it being a cheap product. You might realise that no cushions in expensive show homes or magazines look like this, and that's because a good cushion needs to be what a lot of designers call choppable, which is when you can plump it up and give it one good karate chop down the middle. What this does is create a more interesting laid back and varied shape, which looks far more inviting and high end than perfectly square, rigid looking synthetic cushions. And at IKEA, you can pick up these incredibly affordable 20 inch cushions for just $12 each, which is why we always have these inside the cushions in our home. Of course, IKEA have a massive selection of covers too, and when picking these, really the key is creating textural contrast with complementary tones and colours that don't stray away from the room's colour palette. For instance, with our dark grey sofa, we chose to add a richer matte texture and brighter tone with this head salve cushion cover, which was only $10 and stays within the room's colour palette. And for the second cushion cover, we paired it with a synthetic leather cushion cover that we found over on Amazon, as this ties into the leather topped countertop stools that we have at our kitchen island, which together creates a sense of coherence and intentionality within this room, which most people will barely notice but it definitely makes the space feel more well thought out and expensive. 
However, just because this combination works in my home, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work in yours, as it really depends on the palette of a room as a whole. So other affordable options that I think look great, which are also worth considering, are the Plomenros and Marge Bracken covers, as these are super affordable at just $6 each, whilst also providing some really nice texture, as well as the Sanella covers in grey green, which we also have our family home in London, which have a really interesting high-end looking sheen because of the cotton velvet texture. And with 11 different colours to choose from at just $10 each, each, they're another amazing choice that will fit in almost every colour palette. But on the other hand, if your home looks a little bit flat and you really want to up the texture of your home, you can pair your sofas with the slightly more expensive Cust Flea and Tofto covers, which add a ton of depth. Or you can add patterned covers like the Svartho or Francine, or the even more affordable Jatted Popol, Spick Luba or Stortimian covers. Man, these names just get harder and harder. But I'll just say, be wary with bolder patterns as they are a lot more recognizable. So seeing as IKEA is usually the default choice for a lot of homeowners, these may be items worth avoiding, as almost everyone who's been cushion shopping at IKEA will probably recognize them immediately. But finally, my last recommendation is their Langfjall chair, which is a steal at just $200 for the low back version. And I think this looks way more expensive than it is because it's not corporate looking, which I think is something that you really want to avoid if you want your home or a bedroom office to feel high end. Because unfortunately, most ergonomic chairs tend to look really kind of corporate. And I don't think that they look that good despite costing hundreds of dollars unless they're in a completely corporate or futuristic office setting. Other non-corporate looking options from renowned companies like Herman Miller or Hay are way out of my price range. And despite one day dreaming of owning a design classic like the Eames soft pad chair, this IKEA chair really is the perfect option for me, as it's surprisingly supportive and similar looking alternatives can cost around four or five times the price. Unless you plan on using a standing desk, I would probably recommend the high-backed option, as I did find it to be more comfortable over longer periods back when I was using it in the UK. But seeing as I want a chair that looks as non-corporate as physically possible, and one that encourages me to utilize the standing function of my desk, this low-back version is absolutely perfect. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you found it helpful, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.